the birds. I grew up on a farm in Nebraska where, having seen the land treated with great respect, uh, I later saw our farm destroyed uh, by the, the chemical and petroleum industry. We're up against the best funded propaganda machine in the history of the planet. How can people eat fake food when they can eat real? It's crazy. I also think like that. The four most uh, genetic engineered foods are canola, soy, cotton, and corn. We say no, and the empire is crumbling, and we're going to take it all down. We can take genes that encode the properties of the living organisms from one source and put it into an alternate source for the benefit of mankind. Eh, när vi pratar om lantbruksgröda så kan det ju vara att man eh, skapar resistens mot ja, någon besvärlig svamp eller en insekt eller en virus. Man kan också tänka sig att man förbättrar kvaliteten hos eh, skörden på något sätt. Well, what we learned about the, the GMO variety was that, that it was a lot healthier plant because it it uh, uh, was resistant to corn borers, which corn borers come in and they drill at the shank of the corn and the, the ear of corn will fall off before you can combine it. Typically they take a gene and they put it into a gene gun. They put thousands of genes into a gene gun and blast it into thousands of cells and hope that at least some of those genes get into the DNA of some of those cells. And then we fired the gun. <laughs> So we add mineral salts, we add uh, sh uh, sugar and water and basically these plants can grow in this artificial environment indefinitely. Man kan förändra stärkesammansättningen, man kan eh, förändra proteinsammansättningen, man kan tillföra en mer vitamin, man kan tillföra en nytt vitamin som då den här växten tidigare har saknat. Man kan säga man kan skapa väldigt mycket med tekniken, men det, det är Frågan, vad är vi beredda att betala? As to why we need genetically engineered crops. There are some 800 million hungry people in the world because we are unable to produce enough food. My X chromosome in the minimal rift. This is my whole genetic gift. I was relative to the best of my memory. And the theory that the biotech industry tells us is that it's a very precise insertion and that all they're doing is adding one single trait. Well, that's definitely not true. They think that you cut out one or you put in a new bead and then it will be all all right. The trouble is in nature and in the genome, it is not a single piece of DNA. It is a DNA network. The people who do this obviously understand what's going on and the people who are trying to sell it, they may or may not understand what's going on, but uh, it's clear that the technology does not allow you to be that precise. On the one hand you take out a patent because your food is so unique that you're able to take out a patent which enables you to profit from it, but on the other hand you're able then in regulatory regimes to argue that it's essentially the same as a, a, a conventional a food. What we found when we looked at the FDA's documents is that their own experts, their own scientific experts, had written memo after memo the months preceding the FDA's issuance of its policy statement of May of 1992, stating very, very clearly that as a matter of sound science, genetic engineering had to be viewed as inherently different than traditional breeding. Down the road, we don't know what we're going to get into. Don't have any idea because, you know, years ago, look it over like in Vietnam where they sprayed Agent Orange. Didn't think that was going to hurt. The mother hogs were uh, we're going into their full pregnancies and instead of a, a normal litter of babies we were having, they would deliver bags of water or they wouldn't do anything. You should be running up into the 90% conception rate. 30% don't pay bills. Makes bills. When rats were fed a genetically modified tomato, several developed stomach lesions. Rats fed genetically modified soy had misshapen and rats fed genetically modified canola. But the far greater danger 
life, I believe, in the unintentional creation of deadly pathogens in the course of apparently innocent genetic engineering experiments. Because if you are a farmer and you don't want genetic modified crops, but your neighbor is planting genetic modified crops, how do you prevent cross-pollination from happening? How do you prevent the, the wind from blowing? How do you prevent the bee from flying? There is no way. Es una región de origen de maíz. El problema de la contaminación en esta región es la pérdida de la diversidad biológica en el caso del maíz. Nunca acaba. No, verdad. Nunca acaba. Campesinos no siembran para vender, uh -huh. siembran para comer. I think that there's a, there's a right for people to know what's in their food and it's not labeled because people wouldn't make a profit off of it if, if it was.